Good morning, everybody. Welcome to today's 1 million by 1 million online rendezvous. This is Romana Mitra, founder and CEO of 1M by 1M, coming to you live from Silicon Valley, California. As you know, 1 million by 1 million is the first and only global virtual accelerator in the world. Our mission is to help a million entrepreneurs reach a million dollars and beyond in annual revenue. In support of that mission, we do a lot of different kinds of programming. This is one of them. In this session, as usual, I'm going to tackle questions from, uh, that we've received from our various other touch points, including this one. Um, we'll tackle questions we had last week and so forth. Now, many of you, as we know from our traditional experiences, are looking for feedback on your specific projects. You're doing a startup already, or you're thinking about starting something. Maybe you have a little bit of revenue. Maybe you're trying to pivot. Whatever it is your situation, you are looking for feedback on your specific project. And for that, we have a specific platform, which is the 1M by 1M weekly roundtables. These are free mentoring sessions. If you go to 1M by 1M.com and go to free public roundtables, you will find the entire rest roster of upcoming free mentoring roundtable sessions. And you can uh, register to pitch or attend, and I will be more than happy to work with you on your specific project. These happen on Thursday mornings at 8 a.m. Pacific time. And um, we have done more than 500 of these sessions all the way since 2008, the fall of 2008. So it's been many, many years. Over 150,000 people have participated. It's been a massive experience of working with startups from all over the world and, and looking at their projects, brainstorming with their acceleration strategy. So every single recording of these mentoring sessions are available on our YouTube channel, 1M1M Roundtables. You can go there and listen to those recordings as well. It's also an interesting learning opportunity through that process. So coming back to today's agenda, we are going to go to questions. Last week, we'll start with a question last week, Binu Matavana asked, and the question was, what kind of a team do you need to raise money? Very interesting question. Um, my answer to this, you know, is basically, to raise seed funding, I'm going to talk about seed funding in particular because that's largely the audience that we deal with. If you go to Series A, you're going to need a full executive team to raise Series A these days. But um, you don't need a full executive team for seed funding. However, solo entrepreneurs typically have difficulty in raising seed funding. Investors prefer at least one co-founder. This is a slightly complex issue because if you're a solo founder bootstrapping, you should put all your energy into trying to get to product market fit and getting to paying customer, not on trying to artificially fill a co-founder position. If you naturally are a co-founder team, you have like two co-founders or three co-founders, that's a different scenario. Or everybody is working for equity and you have hopefully complementary skill sets, that's fine. You have to determine who plays what role. Um, but if you are a solo founder, your primary goal should be getting to product market fit. However, you can do that. Now, if you're a solo founder looking for funding, the way to mitigate this is by getting your startup to traction where you have paying customers and a clear path to high velocity customer acquisition as a solo founder. If those metrics are in place, you can raise money without a co-founder. This is a very interesting nuance that you should be aware of. 
Um, I will also point you to case studies. You know, we teach this program, the One Million by One Million program, 100% with case studies. So let me point you to some solo founder case studies. Uh, look at Wingify. Go to the website. Uh, go to blog, 1mby1m.com, then go to blog. And then in the uh, on the left search box, you can type in Wingify. The name of the case study is Solo Founder Bootstrapping to 7 Million in India, Wingify. Then you can look at uh, Madeira Madeira, from Solo Founder to $65 million in revenue, Brazilian entrepreneur Daniel Scandian, CEO of Madeira Madeira. Then you can look at Fine Art America, Doing $5 million a year with three employees, Fine Art America CEO Sean Broy here. All of these are case studies of solo founders who have done very well. You can look at their methodologies, their experiences, and it will give you insights. It will give you inspiration, etc. And you can look at you know any number of case studies you would like. Just the entrepreneur journey section of the blog has case study after case study. You can look at all of those. Now, one other thing to remember, as you are going in, going up in front of investors vis-a-vis -vis team, um, what is, you know, what are we really looking for? And as an investor, if I put an investor hat on my head and I'm thinking about evaluating a team, I'm really looking for two things. I'm looking for who builds the product and who sells the product. In the early stages of the game, there is not a lot of complicated finance. You're not looking for a CFO. You are not even really looking for a VP of sales or a VP of marketing. All you're looking for is somebody who's building the product and somebody who can sell the product. And founder-led sales is very common in the early stages. So that's fine, but somebody has to be able to sell the product and somebody has to be able to build the product. That's really what seed investors are looking for. Okay, hope that satisfies your uh, question, uh, Binu Matavana. I don't know if you're listening today, but I hope you would. A uh, second question, how can we increase our odds of getting into Y Combinator? Y Combinator is a very powerful um, accelerator with a great network. It's, of course, the requirement that is that you will have to move to Silicon Valley. So that's a bit tricky, but if you want to get into Y Combinator, try to understand Y Combinator's motivation. Y Combinator is a small venture fund. They invest small amounts of seed money. They take equity in your venture. They behave exactly like VCs. They want to invest in validated businesses. Look at the case study of Jazz Graywall. Again, I showed you how to find the case studies on the 1M by 1M blog. Look for Jazz Graywall. The company name is CareScore. Jazz bootstrapped CareScore with a paycheck for two years. Jazz, Jazz spoke with three, uh, 30 hospitals to validate his idea. His product was to be sold to hospitals, so he spoke to 30 hospitals. CareScore had two customers before Jazz applied to Y Combinator. While at Y Combinator, Jazz did 160 customer presentations. On demo day, he raised $4.5 million in funding. If you try to apply to Y Combinator with a concept, you won't get in. If you get in with a half-baked concept, you won't raise funding on demo day. You would waste a golden opportunity. Instead, I suggest you spend two years bootstrapping with a paycheck with 1M by 1M. Keep your job so that you're not out of money and you, you have something to pay the bills with, but get as much validation done and whatever methodology you need to learn, learn with 1 million by 1 million, and you don't need to part with any equity that way because we don't charge equity. 
validate your concept, generate traction, then apply to Y Combinator and you have a fully baked plan. You go into Y Combinator, you can really accelerate because they have really great network and you would be able to access, you know, multiplier effects if you go in prepared. If you go in half baked and half assed, you're not going to be able to leverage Y Combinator as well. Your probability of fundraising, if you go prepared into Y Combinator, would be way above average. Okay. Question number three. What are some cases where founders preserved equity ruthlessly? Well, I'm going to start the discussion on this topic with a very important mantra. Ownership matters. We're going to do a case study, and that case study is the equity roadmap, the early stage equity roadmap of Facebook. Mark Zuckerberg retained 26% equity in Facebook. Zuckerberg's net worth is today many, many billions. He crossed 50 billion net worth in January 2017. He's one of the richest men on the planet, richest people on the planet. How did he retain 26% equity in Facebook? Facebook started with friends and family money in February 2004. By September 2004, it had ad revenues. Peter Thiel invested the first outside money. Peter invested $500,000 for 10% of Facebook. If you contrast that with what happens in a lot of startups, they get $25,000 for 10% equity. This is a ridic ridiculously bad investment strategy, fundraising strategy. Peter Thiel invested $500,000 for 10% in equity. That kept the cap table healthy. Facebook remained attractive for follow-on rounds. Let's look at all the Facebook rounds. September 2004 is the 500k seed round with Peter Thiel. The valuation was $5 million. May 2005, 12.7 million Series A, valuation $100 million. The revenue run rate is 6 million. May 2006, 27.5 million Series B, valuation $525 million. Everybody was talking about Facebook. Zuckerberg was hailed as the next Bill Gates. Zuckerberg wielded a lot of negotiating power in each round. Facebook was a rocket. VCs were begging to get in to the deal. Zuckerberg does not get carried away. October 2007, $240 million Series C, valuation $15 billion, revenue run rate $150 million. Amazing, right? Amazing trajectory. $15 billion in three years, starting from 2004 and by October 2007, this is a $15 billion valuation with $150 million run rate. Now, roll back a little bit and look at a little anecdote. Yahoo wanted to buy Facebook for a billion dollars in July 2006. Investors wanted to sell the company. Mark Zuckerberg did not want to sell. This, of course, is a contentious situation in the boardroom of any company, any startup. The founder doesn't want to sell, the investors want to sell. Zuckerberg won because he had ownership control. There are two lessons from Zuckerberg. Don't raise too much money too soon and focus on revenues to keep valuations high and minimize dilution. Ownership matters. 
Use a non-equity accelerator to get your ducks aligned. Don't raise money too soon and give up too much equity. One million by one million does not charge equity. Early funding destroys cap tables and destroyed cap tables means disaster for future rounds of funding. So be like Mark Zuckerberg, take care of ownership. Zuckerberg, by the way, did a bunch of other things that were kind of pioneering and have become standard practice in Silicon Valley since, which is he, um, you know, he basically created voting shares versus non-voting shares. All investors did not get voting shares. So that's a more complex financial engineering, um, ownership engineering that he did very effectively such that even today he maintains voting control over Facebook. Um, he's played this game in a very savvy way. Now, I'm going to uh, point you to a few resources in this context. Number one is our free bootstrapping course. If you go to the blog, oneandbyonem.com blog, do a search on bootstrapping course, you will find uh, a course that I had recorded for LinkedIn a while back. It was, it's been a very popular course. You will learn a lot from that. It's a, it's a one hour course. And then case studies, the one in by one in case studies are available free on the entrepreneur journey section of the blog. There are thousands of case studies. You will find a hundred plus unicorn case studies and you know, hundreds of VC funded case studies, hundreds of bootstrap case studies. Also, there are a dozen books based on these case studies under the Entrepreneur Journey series title. If you want to go further in your learning, go to 1M by 1M Basic. Go to the website, go to 1M by 1M Basic. This is our curriculum only program where you find the full 1M by 1M digital curriculum with video lectures and case studies. And it's very well organized, very efficient. There are hundreds of hours of curriculum you know, they're probably over 500 hours of curriculum, but what you get to do is get something, access something very well organized and efficiently. If you spend 50 hours learning through this curriculum, you're going to make giant leaps through that process. So that's those are some pointers for further learning uh, for all entrepreneurs who are trying to figure out how to be a successful entrepreneur. My next question is, my CEO co-founder wants to fire me in order to get my unvested shares back. What should I do? This is a question I responded to on Quora. We do hear stories of founders getting fired often. Might be helpful to understand why this is such a recurring issue in entrepreneurs' lives. I categorize the causes in three buckets. Number one is non-performance. If a founder takes investor money and then fails to deliver on the KPIs quarter after quarter, that would be a legitimate reason for getting fired. I suggest you, you look into whether this is an issue in your case. Your co-founder wants to fire you, why? Is it because of non-performance? Second one is politics and personality. Often founders accept to bring in a CEO and then there are ensue, ensue personality clashes, power struggles and related politics. In your case, your CEO co-founder seems to want to take control, but is this the only reason or is there more? Are you clashing uh, with your co-founder? What is the basis of the clash? Can it be worked out? What is happening? What kind of a power struggle is ensuing that is causing this, you know, rift. The third uh, reason why people have problems, dissent, is disagreement on strategy. Founders and boards may not agree on strategy, co-founders may not agree on strategy, and that could result in a leadership switch or, you know, people getting fired. For example, say the founder wants to build a consumer-facing business while the co-founder sees a safer bet in an let's say the founder CEO wants to do a consumer facing business, whereas the co-founder wants to see a, see a safer bet in an enterprise business, B2B facing enterprise business. 
this is interesting if the founder has enough equity the founder ceo has enough equity and control over voting shares he or she may win the argument and uh, the other co-founder may get kicked out or the strategy may not be able to adopt it and if you cannot work it work out your differences you're going to get fired if not strategy disputes are a common reason that founders get fired or co-founders get fired so so check in your case is it that you and your co-founder may not agree on strategy and uh can it, can these strategy disputes be worked out um so i think it, it helps to understand what's happening now on the mechanics of your equity unvested equity will not vest if you get fired but vested shares remain in the hands of the founder remain in your hands even after getting fired you need to look at what is the termination clause in your contract do you have a contract do you have a termination clause typically it would spell out what happens if you get fired you can negotiate a termination bonus of equity it depends on what negotiation leverage you have so if you don't have a contract and a termination con uh, clause in the contract then um then you have to negotiate and you can negotiate of course the vested shares have to remain with you you can also get potentially a termination bonus but um you know in some cases if you have a termination clause in your contract that includes an acceleration of your invested shares then then the you know your your co-founder will have to follow that clause so it's hard for me to advise you more specifically without looking at your contract but these are the typical situations that arise so um i would say these are the ones that are worth checking I'm going to go to our last question today which is as always how can I get feedback from you on my venture you know I happen to be one of the most accessible people in the world in the startup universe if you want feedback from me on your venture you can reach me I will give you the details of exactly how to do that after I get a sip of water 1 million by 1 million offers free online mentoring round tables for entrepreneurs looking to discuss positioning financing and all other aspects of building a startup venture up to 5 entrepreneurs who registered to pitch at our free mentoring round tables will be able to present their businesses they'll get straight forward feedback advice on next steps strategy guidance answers to questions from me as well as often from our frequent guests who are vcs seed investors ceos etc you can go to the website onem1m.com go to free public round tables and register there to attend listen learn join in on the conversations via live chat uh, all of you who register will receive the recording by email also the next day all the recordings are on our youtube channel um so next few public round tables are october 15 22 and 29 uh, 8 am pacific time is the time when we do this routinely you will find uh the registration links uh there on the website just convert the time zone to your time zone wherever you are i know you are all spread out all over the world um i also want to point you to the self assessment on our website you know we get a ton of questions on due diligence how do you do due diligence on a startup um or how do investors do due diligence on a startup so the self assessment will give you the due diligence questions and um, the other thing that i would request you to look at is the investor introduction se section of our website if you're looking for funding um warm introductions are always better than cold emails to uh, investors so if you want to go through us we have a you know a, investor introductions are part of the one and by one and premium program so just go study the investor introduction section on the website 
you'll find it at the bottom of the uh, home page in the bottom navigation bar. Um, of course, investor introductions are for premium members only. So you do need to join the premium program to receive access to the investor introduction feature. Um, one and by one basic is where you can go to start learning the curriculum that you can do at your own time from wherever in the world. If you also want the mentoring sessions to be included in your membership, then you need one and by one in premium. So that's it. I am going to sign off today um, and we will be back here next week. We will also be back here this week, later this week on our WebEx roundtable. So um, by all means, use all the different features and offerings from 1 million by 1 million. And I very much look forward to working with you and I hope you make lots of progress on your venture. Meanwhile, stay safe. It's very worrisome. The pandemic is rising in so many parts of the world right now. America, Europe, India, these are all geographies where the pandemic is rising. So please stay safe. Do not go participate in super spreader events. Unfortunately, our president here in America is uh, organizing super spreader events as campaign rallies. And these are very dangerous things to go hang out in. All the best. We'll see you soon.